Good afternoon. This video, we're going to demonstrate F5 CIS new capabilities with regards to service type load balancer. So service type load balancer is in combination with IPAM. And these two functionalities were released in the CIS 2.4 release, which was released last week. And so as we go through this user guide, I'm going to demonstrate the functionality of how service type load balancer works and how it works with the F5 CIS and F5 IPAM controller. And so you might ask, why do you want to use service type load balancer? Service type load balancer is really the simplest and fastest way to expose a service inside the Kubernetes cluster to the external world. So really what's happening is that your developer can create a service inside Kubernetes and a public IP address can be exposed and provided to that service. And the goal here is for CIS to take that public IP, or if you want to call it that external IP, which is what the service calls it, and configure the big IP. And this should all happen through an automated process. And that's exactly what I'm going to show you. So taking a look at this example that you can see on the screen here. So we have a service called f5demo.service, and this is just a YAML file. This is a very simple service. But what's really interesting here is inside the service, you will notice that there's an annotation. And so because we're not dealing with IP addresses, we need to specify somehow where this address is going to come from. Since this is potentially, let's say, an on-prem environment, CIS needs some mechanism to basically pull and associate an IP address with that endpoint service called F5 demo in this case, take that service and then configure the big IP with that service external IP address and what we know as potentially a virtual IP address. And so as you can see this annotation here, we see that this annotation is of IPAM label. So we're using the functionality of the F5 IPAM controller, and it gives us the capabilities inside the IPAM controller to create these labels. And this label happens to be test. Test is just the name of a group. It could be a namespace, it could be a user group, but test has a range of IP addresses associated to it. And exactly that that's what's happened here. So the other thing that's also required in the service is, of course, type load balancer. Type load balancer is really what defines the service as type load balancer, and therefore the external IP address would, would get created. So what you can see is with the service, you can also see here on the IPAM with the IPAM, you can see this within the custom resource definition. Here you can see that the host spec is of IPAM label test. Since there's no host header here, we're dealing with just the IPAM label of test. And what will happen is this custom resource will get the IP address from the pool or from the IP range within that label of test. And an IP address would get allocated and as you can see here, this IP address got allocated. It is of, this key string is quite important because it is of the namespace default with the following service. So for the following service within that namespace with that IPAM label, the following IP address got allocated. So you can kind of follow along. Inside my user guide, I have provided all of the configurations that you would require to set this up. You could clone this repo and you could go ahead and test it yourself. As you can see, I have a little bit more detailed of the service and kind of what the service looks like if you wanted to edit it or if you wanted to look at it in a little bit more detail. Um, you'll notice that, of course, the IP address and the status is shown. If you wanted to configure the service, we talk a little bit about some of the requirements. Let's go down and take a look at what the IPAM controller would require. Remember, we talked a little bit about those labels. And so this was the one label that we defined as test. Test is really important because that's the label that we define as the annotation in the service. 
but when we configure the IPAM controller, we define the static range. And so IP range of test is the following block of addresses and IP range of production is another following. These are just labels. These can be anything that makes sense to you. When we configure CIS, it's really important that CIS has IPAM is equal to true because CIS is going to work with IPAM to obviously pull these addresses so it can configure the big IP with the associated addresses. The other thing that's really important is that we have to use CRD mode and that the CIS has to have the CRD schema or you're going to get some log messages because that's the way CI, that's the way CRDs operate. It does require the open API schema for validation. And then the other thing that you would need to do is just really deploy the CIS controller itself. All of the information that you need is within my GitHub repo, so you can actually go there. To configure the IPAM controller, the only thing that you really need to use that's somewhat customizable in your environment is your IP range. We talked about this earlier, Take, create the range called test or create the range called production and give it a range of IP addresses. You can see here, I have two different subnets. Uh, there's three in this range and there's 20 in that range. This is nice because this is really flexible. You can assign your developer with a specific IP range. They can go and create their services and the big IP would be good configured as appropriately. Here are the commands that you need to create for, for IPAM. It's the cl cluster role binding. It's of course the IPAM schema because it's CRD based and then deploy the IPAM controller. What I really like here is that when you deploy the IPAM controller, you can monitor my logs and you can actually see what the IPAM controller is creating. And of course, let's take a look at the demo itself. So I'm going to switch over to the demo. You'll notice right here that if I do a kube ctl get services, you'll notice right now that there's no services created. So obviously that would mean that my big IP would have no virtual servers on the big IP since there's no services deployed. So let's go ahead and create a service. Again, this is exactly the same configuration that's in the repo. All I did was clone the repo and you get access to all these files. You can pull these files. So let's go ahead and do a kubectl create minus f and this is the f5 production service. And so as you can see, I've created that. You'll notice right away that you can see that there is um, configuration on the big IP and you will notice that we, we've allocated an IP address from the range for that specific app. You'll notice it's on the 192.30 which was the IP range and this is the IP address that was created and as you can see there operation create and there is some updates on my my big IP, I can see the update right there. And if we take a look now and rerun that command again, where we do a kube get service, we can see that that public IP address or that external IP has been added as an external IP address. And so let's go and take a look at the big IP. And as you can see, you can see that the external IP address is plumbed into the big IP right there with the following pool members. There's two pool members um, because at this point there is a replica of two for the deployment. And I should be able to actually connect to 125.30. And as you can see, that actually connects quite good. It tells me who my IP address is, etc. So let's go ahead and create another one. I'm going to go ahead and change to my directory structure where my test application is. And it's the same thing. We'll do a kubectl create. So automatically you'll see the API request. You can see the API request. There is an API update. And as you can see, there is the new address that has been allocated from the pool range with that configuration right there. 
and as we go and take a look at the service itself we can see there that 113 has been has been allocated and this is the service of f5 demo test so if we go take a look at the big ip we will see another service being added which is one which is 75.113 uh, if i go to that virtual address we can connect to it we can connect to it no problem so let's go take a quick look at what we did in the service configuration because that was actually quite interesting so as you can see i'm going to browse back and all your files are here you can literally just pull these files so i pulled the files in the pod plot deployment so you saw the pod deployment the production and the test pod we'll take a look here here is your deployment that will deploy the replica of two you can scale that if you want but this is what was important so as you can see here there is the annotation that points to the production which is that IPAM label that I configured in my IPAM controller and so that was all that was all that was required and of course the other thing that was required is of course type load balancer and then the status is really important as well because the status is getting feedback from the IPAM controller as well as getting feedback from the service we can see the same thing on the test side this is the test test service and as you can see there there is the IP range and of type load balancer so that's really all for the demo today with regards to demonstrating service service type load balancer using F5 IPAM controller and of course F5 CIS to configure the big IP thank you very much hope you enjoyed it